Yuri, we are here at the second global conference on agricultural research for development in Punta del Este, Uruguay. You participated in two pre-conference meetings on the nexus between agriculture, gender and nutrition. During the first meeting you spoke in a panel discussion looking at how agriculture can have more impact on nutrition and health. What was the main outcome of this session? The morning session that I attended on the pathways of uh, the pathways of agriculture to nutrition um, was very rich. There was participation from donor groups, from CGIAR research institutions, and also from governments. And these were all people who've been working on uh, the particular link of nutrition, gender, and agriculture. So there was a very rich discussion, first of all, on um, a lot of consensus that people quickly um, came to on uh, focusing on um, evidence-based solutions, on looking at the process, and also not forgetting the gender element. What I what I liked most about the session was um, we had regional breakout groups, and I think that it's it often gets lost. Big topics get lost when we stay at the global level, and it's really when we start talking about what happens in countries and what happens in communities in each of the countries that we st start to really understand how we can make changes. So there was groups um, that focused on Latin America, uh, South Asia and also Africa. And each of those groups obviously focused on very different things. From the Latin American group, we heard about the importance of the private sector and the role of markets to enhance uh, nutrition intakes of people, um, bearing in mind that it is a very urbanized country. We also heard from our Brazilian colleague about the potential of school feeding programs and being a very important vehicle for change. Um, from Africa, we heard about uh, experiences working with the Sun. There was um, uh, a coordinator from uh, national coordinator from Senegal who has been working on multi-sectoral national planning even before the Sun. So that was a, a very good example of what I believe Sun envisions in its countries going forward. And in the South Asia group, there was uh, discussions mainly from our Indian colleagues about how to move this forward in uh, India, which is a very, uh, which is a country with a very strong and um, powerful bureau bureaucracy. So we talked about the challenges of how to meet the bottom up. Uh, bottom-up demands with the linking that to the national planning um, authorities. So those were some of the things that came out of the morning session. You're leading a knowledge platform, the Secure Nutrition Platform, within the World Bank. Can you tell us more about who is involved in this initiative, its focus and the objective behind it? The Secure Nutrition Platform was established in 2011. Um, uh, we now have six knowledge platforms in the bank. Secure Nutrition is one of them. It's a way for the bank to engage in a new innovative area that is not covered by our traditional uh, practices. Um, not to say that linking food security to uh, food security and agriculture to nutrition is particularly new or innovative to many development partners, but to the bank it is. And that's why I believe the bank management decided to uh, fund us to, um, for this initiative. So it's made up of a multi-sectoral group of people from agriculture, myself, uh, people from nutrition, and people from our poverty reduction economist group. Um, part of uh, part of the multi-sectoral leadership is to help facilitate silo breaking within our own institution. We also engage with the outside development community, and in our particular case, every knowledge platform is different, but in our particular case, we quickly realize that there are many, many leaders out there, and we are in a catch-up role. So we are reaching out to partner organizations, CSOs, academic research organizations, bilaterals, international organizations, 
I believe today we have about 14 partner organizations. Uh, we exchange information face-to-face -face and also through a website that we've created um, to try to contribute to any gaps that remain in, in this field. And one of the things that quickly came out was that there isn't really a place, a forum, to discuss operational knowledge gaps. So that is where our focus is. Through this platform, we like to influence World Bank operations and, if possible, operations by other institutions. Um, so that's what we focus on. A crucial aspect when it comes to investments in agricultural research is delivery. In this regard, how do you ensure research evidence for investments regarding nutrition-sensitive agriculture at the World Bank? Evidence base is extremely important, um, obviously, these days in, in all of development. But one thing, um, one, and, and one thing that's coming out very clearly is that compared to the direct interventions for nutrition, the evidence base for nutrition sensitive development, such as through agriculture, is quite weak. Um, there have been systematic reviews carried out, and Quite frankly, the result is that there isn't much rigorous knowledge out there specifically because people have not really asked that question of how does, uh, how could agriculture contribute to nutrition or if they've attempted such interventions, it just was not monitored appropriately to be able to justify a rigorous evaluation. So. From my point, when I say that evidence-based is very important for us to influence the status quo, change the status quo of the World Bank, I think we have to be a little bit broad than looking at only very rigorous, rigorous impact evaluations. If we wait for uh, these rigorous randomized control trials to uh, be generated, We'll be waiting a very long time, and this is something, the uh, agenda is something that we are working on right now. So I am working with um, my regional colleagues in the World Bank and trying to generate knowledge lessons that come out of projects on a very practical basis. And I also think the, the strength of the World Bank is the, the fact that we have uh, an investment arm and that we can tie that to our dialogue with the policymakers and the government. We're not a research institution, um, although we do have a research arm. Uh, the bulk of the World Bank is not a research institution, so we welcome contributions from the research community, and we would like to focus on lessons learned through our operations and tying that to relevant policy recommendations. You also chaired a second pre-conference meeting at the GCARD on Gender, Nutrition and Agriculture, which was sponsored by the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. At this event, different bilateral and multilateral donors spoke about how to accelerate nutrition and gender outcomes. From your perspective as World Bank Senior Economist and member of the platform's thematic work stream on nutrition and agriculture, what is needed to improve and accelerate gender and nutrition outcomes and what role can the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development play in this process? I thought it was very good that nutrition was one of the agendas for the second G-Card meeting. Uh, there's tremendous um, expectation from the nutrition community of leveraging the agriculture sector for enhancing nutrition outcomes. But the reaction from the agriculture side has not always been there. So the fact that we are focusing on this at GCARD, um, an important agriculture meeting, I, I think in itself is a very important step. Um, one of the things that struck me as a very practical approach when we talk about nutrition in agriculture is to really use the gender lens. And it's because um, nutrition in itself um, is sometimes quite foreign in concept to what we are used to working on in agriculture. In nutrition, the focus is on the first 1,000 days of life, starting from conception. And there is much emphasis on looking at children, and young infants mainly, under two years old. So to take that 
uh, approach and to try to link that with agriculture is often not that easy. And I think a very practical um, and operational lens is, is gender. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that shows that the gender pathway is actually one of the most effective ways of um, improving nutrition through agriculture, empowering women farmers, for example is a win-win because um, it raises uh, the productivity of women farmers, but at the same time, research has shown that uh, discretionary income held by women tend to lead to the consumption of better um, food, higher nutrient content food, or perhaps better health care, or other things that lead to uh, nutrition incomes. Uh, nutrition outcomes. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to mention. The other thing was that the uh, other thing that I wanted to mention was that uh, although this was a very important step that I'm very happy about, and as well, and I can report that back to the donor uh, platform uh, working group on nutrition. We have to keep in mind that. Um, we need to constantly advocate towards the Greater Agriculture Donor Committee. And I think attempts are being made in many of our donor agencies. The World Bank, for example, we are now finalizing our forthcoming agriculture action plan for 2013 to 2015. And unlike in the previous action plan, there's quite a heavy emphasis on getting nutrition outcomes out of um, agriculture. And I know that similar attempts are being made in many of the donor platform member organizations. So I think that in the next G-Card or even before that, it would be good to take stock of where we are, exchange information, and move forward um, on this important agenda. Thank you, Chris.